Hello, everyone. It's Christy Bird McKeeve, CEO of Healthy Rural California. Today is Friday, August 18th, and I'm going to focus on defining and explaining Healthy Rural California as a GME partner um, offering solutions for um, the family medicine residency and why we are supporting a local hospital to consider um, other residency programs. Um, this is this has been a journey for me since 2019 when the community came together and really decided that we needed to address access to care issues in the only way that really actually does make a significant systemic difference which is by establishing graduate medical education programs to be centered in Chico um, and to support recruitment of residents and then physicians to the Butte County and uh, surrounding region. Um, again, this was all started in 2019 in the wake of the campfire and um, the significant loss of even more physicians. And um, so, we are Healthy Rural California, a new nonprofit. We were established in early 2020. And we then did a feasibility study, which pointed to the fact that by, you know, making Healthy Rural California into a sponsoring institution would be the strongest method to establish residency programs, also what I will call GME, and also through the full name of graduate medical education in Butte County. It's not to say that other, you know, there's other possibilities and it's exciting to hear that Oroville Hospital has become a sponsoring institution and is establishing their own graduate medical education programs. In addition, Shasta Regional Medical Center in Reading has also established um, a internal medicine residency. They are a part of several different hospitals in a group. And uh, so they already have sponsoring institution status as an entity that owns that hospital. And so they're just going full force on meeting their CMS reimbursement cap, starting with internal medicine this year. And I will explain what that cap means. I think that um, we as Healthy Rural California present a fantastic model where we're outsourcing, uh, we're hiring and training our staff to be experts in graduate medical education. And today is, I have to say it all to my team, happy GME Professionals Day. I'm really proud of the work that we've been doing over the last few years. We've learned so much. I've learned so much about graduate medical education. We've also gone through the process of developing the psychiatry residency and getting that accreditation. Uh, we have, you know, so much knowledge. Um, and so when an entity partners with us, you're basically getting all of that staff already, um, a GME department, um, an outsource, if you will, um, so that the hospital doesn't have to hire all the staff, pay all the staff, find the office space for that staff, um, raise about a million dollars per residency program, if not more, to then evaluate and pull together the application for accreditation and then do all the faculty development and the scholarship activity that is required by ACGME. It is a very expensive launch uh, for this. And, and guess what? Healthy Rural California is doing that. Um, in case in point is that we have a $2 million grant to launch the family medicine residency. And it's not just the application and paying for the program director and all the staff and, and all of you know, that it's that we're going to be using a CMS reimbursement model with Enlo Medical Center as it goes forward. And um, <laughs> then that means that it's CMS reimbursement. So this $2 million actually will be paying for the first cohort of four residents to start in 2025, should we get accredited and it meet that time frame. And that means that for several months, it may even be as much as six months, then we have to pay those salaries 
poor and benefits for the residents. Um, and then um, and then the reimbursements through Enlo Medical Center would start. So, you know, you might think $2 million, who needs that? Well, you do. I mean, you, you literally have to start paying people their salaries before the reimbursements get uh, kicked in and, and flow back to um, to actually pay for those salaries. So it's a lot of money. It's a lot of resources. It's a lot of education. It's a lot of staff training. Our program directors are also brand new um, and uh, the faculty are new to teaching residents. Um, so, you know, it's, I'm not telling anyone in the community of Chico and Butte County to scare you. What I'm trying to say is that Healthy Rural California is building this and getting that money and then handing it to the community and our partners on a silver platter wrapped in a bow. And I'm, I get it, it's, it's overwhelming, it's also new, it's, it's tough, but um, I'm, I'm hopeful that the leadership can consider, keep considering us as a, as a good partner. Uh, there are no other people in Chico who are trained in graduate medical education like we now are. We've also been through one process of accreditation and then getting the first cohort. We have invested through Healthy Rural California in um, the MedHub software. That's about $7,000 per year. We will be maintaining that because we have psychiatry now. We're going to have family medicine and maybe other residency programs. Again, the hospital does not need to invest in all of these things because we already are doing that. MedHub will also generate all of the invoices, faculty time, resident time, you know, packaged up, again, handing on a silver platter wrapped in a bow. So I am today reflecting on the enormous information that I have been working on for four years, and yet this might be new to others. Um, I want to uh, encourage anyone to ask me questions. We have such a fantastic nursing education, other education, and yet medical education is missing from our community. And that's a problem for the recruitment of physicians. I have come to see how important it is to have medical education in a strong pathway. Maybe not complete start to finish, but Healthy Rural California is doing everything we can, both encouraging youth through our med ed pro program, our healthcare pathways, um, working with all of the entities, community colleges, Chico State's pre-med program, recruiting students into the pre-med program, even from Chico State students. Um, and then graduate medical education. And then in a few years time, we are also hopeful to really step into the medical education space as regional campuses. We have interest from UC Davis and Toro and the residents will be teaching those medical students. Um, so I promised to talk about this five-year CMS cap. I'm gonna be very clear, Christie did not create this rule. It was sometime back in the Stonehenge days. I don't know, the federal government, somehow somebody said, oh, it should only take five years for any hospital or school of medicine to create graduate medical education programs that they will oh, ever, forever need. And so that's called the five-year cap. So the second, the family medicine residents step foot on Enlo facilities. That triggers the five-year cap. And then at five years, the CMS reimbursement rates will be capped forevermore. So if we only have 12 family medicine residents by the year 2030, <laughs> that's it. You can never, ever launch any more residency programs. There's some wiggle room. There could be some adjustments. But you literally would have five years to figure this out. And we have Healthy Rural California has gotten sponsorship dollars to the to, you know, a pretty big amount so that the feasibility study can be done so that Enlo can know how many different programs are possible. 
We've also done some analysis of the requirements with our Healthy Rural California team. Uh, Sarah did a fantastic presentation and I'm gonna record it so I can also share that with everyone. Pediatrics is not possible. Um, I, it's the pediatric requirements for ACGME accreditation are enormous. But there's other possibilities, and we as a partner want to make sure that um, anyone who works with us isn't going to somehow trigger that cap and get to 2030 and, and not be able to ever do anything more, even expanding the number of family medicine residents that are possible in the program. I recently heard that six or seven residents per, per cohort is um, the sweet spot for financing. It's, uh, you know, you have to really also think about financing for graduate medical education in terms of volume. The more residents you have, the more money you generate for the hospital, for the sponsoring institution, uh, or, you know, who's got the CMS reimbursement rates. It's just like volume of patients, volume of beds, right? So there is a financial incentive for and low Medical Center to really look at the full breadth of what graduate medical education programs are possible. And then how many in residents in each of those programs and that we are right here, Healthy Rural California, ready to get the funding to launch, to um, put the application for accreditation in as the sponsoring institution with all of the bells and whistles and gadgets that are required in order to get residents to apply, to vet them through um, interviews and all of the things literally that we would be doing that NLO does not need to hire, pay for, staff, figure out, because we're doing that. Um, so I am understanding that this seems like it's really a lot. And he just wanted to do family medicine. I get that. But I hope that I can inspire confidence in the ENLO leadership that we are doing this and we are competent. We've learned a ton. We continue to learn. We'll always have that learning mindset. We've got psychiatry going um, and it's not with ENLO, but that doesn't mean <laughs> we're, it doesn't exist. It does. And we're actually put together a fantastic psychiatry residency. And then the family medicine uh, application has gone in. So yeah, I there's so much more to talk about. Um, Healthy Rural California's consortium model is different, but guess what? There's no medical school in Chico yet. Uh, so the normal model of having a medical school and across the street is the hospital, that doesn't exist. Um, and so we have to, to be creative and there's a lot of room for that creativity through having a nonprofit consortium model to be the sponsoring institution and that's Healthy Rural California. Now, getting faculty to teach, we are gonna have a meeting on September 27th at the Enlo Conference Center. And uh, we're also going to arrange to have our team meet with each of the de departments that are part of the family medicine um, requirements for ACGME. Um, we have a lot of um, expertise to share with anybody, so feel free to ask. Um, Elisa is the program coordinator for family medicine and she will be in touch to schedule meetings. Dr. Schroll is the program director. Um, Dr. Myrano is Enlo's site director, and uh, we are all more than happy to come talk to you to really suss out what are the requirements that uh, you as faculty would need to know. There's core faculty, which are different requirements, and so uh, happy to talk about it. Um, this video is really just to give that overview of why it makes sense to not just look at family medicine, but to really look at the full picture of all GME that is possible so that you aren't getting to 2030. And Enlo Medical Center says, gee, we really do need internal medicine so that we can help train and then recruit more hospitalists, um, right? There's also the community perspective. So for family medicine, 
Two of the continuity clinic residents will be with Northern Valley Indian Health. Two will be at Enlo. Um, and um, Northern Valley Indian Health is a great partner for, for this. And um, so we are, you know, you got to think about it beyond um, an individual and the need. You have to look at it through the lens of the needs of the community. And that together, by working together, we can actually solve the problem of access to care in the community. Again, please, please ask me questions, invite me to come speak. I don't, I'm open. What more can I do to literally hand you all in my grubby little paws, graduate medical education? <laughs> please tell me what more I can do because I feel really tired. And I've been really trying to convince everyone it's okay, we can take this leap of faith together. And it's actually not that big of a leap of faith. We're actually giving faculty development appointments, faculty development resources, uh, ver um, volunteer clinical faculty status at UC Davis, at Toro University. We're providing didactics from those two schools and Stanford. And Chico State, we have, we're building research programs. I mean, literally handing you graduate medical education. It's in your hands. Thank you and have a great weekend.